Japanese game shows have been ridiculed for decades, not only for their strangeness, but also for their potential danger. I'm sure many have seen a clip from Takeshi's Castle where Japanese people, stung in the butt, run an obstacle course. But perhaps the peak of absurdity was the show Susunu Denpa Shonen. In it, volunteers risk their own health for fleeting fame, performing the most outlandish challenges. These ranged from hitchhiking from Africa to Europe, attempting to build a raft and sail away from an uninhabited island, or receiving food only when your favorite baseball team wins. However, the climax of this show was the segment, Prize Marathon. How did it all start? They gathered 20 budding comedians in a room, after which they randomly selected one winner who would become a participant in the show. Fate chose Tamayoki Hamatsu. The producers said he was lucky and his luck might come in handy, after which they took him to a tiny apartment and told him to participate in an experiment. In 98, Japan was in an economic recession, that is, a critical economic downturn, when the production of goods and services was decreasing. And in order to somehow compensate for this economic decay, the country began a mania for all sorts of coupons. The magazine's giveaways were bursting with contests of all kinds. You could win anything from a honeymoon to a jar of sake. And Tamayoki was supposed to find out if it was possible to fully exist only on the basis of one goods. This applied to both appliances, clothing, and food. They locked him in a room, made him undress and fill out postcards. But not just for no reason, he had a goal. The experiment will end as soon as the total amount of his winnings amounts to 1 million yen or $10,000 at that time. But now let me explain to you what it all feels like in reality. You spend 10 hours a day filling out the same type of paperwork, by hand deciphering some damn crosswords to try to unlock a loot box with food or clothes. And in the loot box, as the saying goes, there's only tomato sauce, beans, and the legendary recipe for beans in tomato sauce. Meanwhile, everything you read is damn advertising. You listen to the radio for advertising. You communicate with the operator on the phone only about advertising. You're locked in a room the size of a bathroom. You can't communicate with close friends. You have no idea what's going on in the world. You have no hygiene products. You have no food, no entertainment. And all you can do is write damn postcards. All you have is a coffee table, phone, radio, paper, magazine, and a pillow. There was nothing else in this room for almost a year and a half. Let's start with the name for Tamayoki. Our producers looked at the guy and noticed his face's similarity to an eggplant. And that's it. Now he'll have the nickname Eggplant for the rest of his life. That's how Nasubi is translated. And so that people wouldn't forget, his genitalia was censored throughout the show using an eggplant. During the entire, in brackets, experiment, they never once called him by his name. And this was the least offensive act of human dignity insult. As I said, the first thing they made him do in the room was undress. And if you watch the show, you can see how deeply Nasobi is affected by this. Remember this, we'll come back to it. So, the experiment began. For the first few days, he simply wrote postcards in attempts to win anything. But most of all, he wanted food and clothes. He won for the first time on the third or fourth day, when they sent him 12 packs of jelly, which he quickly ate. In fact, even though he didn't win anything for a while, they still fed him. Well, saying they fed him is an overstatement. He had to change the film in the camera several times a day, and at the end of the day, a person came to collect these films, and for the first two weeks, according to Nasubi, they gave him bread, but when he first won something relatively edible, they stopped giving him this bread. He won a bag of rice, finally some substantial food, which he had nowhere to cook. Yes, he had a kitchen with a stove, but his only utensils were chopsticks, and he was hungry. So that day he just ate raw rice. Understanding that he couldn't live like this, no, he didn't end the experiment. He decided to wash the jelly pack, fill it with rice, add water, and place it next to the stove, and he succeeded. He cooked the rice. For the first time in two weeks, he ate something calorific, something that could nourish his body. Simply boiled rice in a jelly pack without salt. Just rice. And he was happy. The most terrible thing Nasubi was subjected to was hunger. All right, it was one of the terrible things. He could go without eating for a week. If he was lucky, he ate a handful of rice for dinner, and that was his only meal, as it seemed to me. I don't think it was a coincidence that someone from the filming crew was yelling on the street like a street food vendor, saying, Here it is. Food is literally next to you. But the cruelest case of mocking a hungry person was in the very first month. There was a knock at the door of his room, 
He was naked. He opened the door, and there stood a courier with a greasy ramen with fried pork and stewed vegetables. He vividly described the order, showed it to Nasubi, so that the strong smell of the soup overwhelmed his senses, and asked for 1700 yen. Our poor guy didn't have any money, after which the courier checked the address, apologized, and left. That is, they whetted his appetite and left, and he was alone with himself and a handful of rice. And there were many such incidents. They also made fun of him over the phone. While waiting for a call to confirm his contest win, he was constantly getting random calls. Either they hung up immediately or offered English learning courses just to once again look at the upset face of the poor guy. After all, he's a comedian. He was always trying to somehow play this off and come up with a joke or just make a funny face. At first, he tried to be cheerful as much as he could, jumping up each time he was brought a delivery in hopes of getting something edible. And he was lucky. That's how he got spaghetti with canned food though there was nowhere to cook the spaghetti and nothing to open the cans with. So Nasubi continued to eat dry rice. The first month was not very successful. He earned only 15,000 yen, of which the most valuable were 2,000 yen in cash. And among the useful things, he won shower gel. February was more successful. He won nata, some sort of beans. I wasn't kidding about the loot box with the legendary recipe for beans and tomato sauce. He also had salmon bone snacks. As I understand it, this is for beer, radish, akami beans. No, I'm really not joking about loot boxes. Sake in an aluminum can and a bottle of egg sake. I don't think it's worth mentioning that the drink was consumed. After all, a person going crazy in a confined space is much more boring than a drunk person going crazy in a confined space. But this helped Nasubi a lot. He washed the can carefully removed the top and got a small but still a pot on which it was more convenient to cook rice and finally he could eat the spaghetti he was also very lucky because he won something very important meat and he cooked it using a handle holding it over the fire and so i watch as a man eats half raw meat for the first time in two months without salt and pepper almost crying with happiness that his body has received the much needed protein for the first time during the show and i start to feel sad but this sadness didn't last long for me. Indeed, he finally got what he wanted to win from the very first day. Clothing, so he could finally cover himself up because he got worn women's panties from Miss Hatomi. And yes, he tried to pull them over his butt, but he didn't succeed. Of course, I knew that vending machines with used panties were basically a myth, but there were indeed sales of used female items from a specific person, and over time, nothing has changed. But coming back to Nasumi, this is horribly offensive. Wanted clothes? Here you go. Just a nightmare. But it should be said that he was lucky in some sense, because he got something really worthwhile. A PS1 game disc. For a bored organism, this is literally a lifesaver. One thing though. There were neither game consoles nor TVs. Also among the useless things, he won a folding bicycle. And then, standing on the brink of despair, he was lucky enough to make a friend. He won a toy seal, named it Binasu and happily communicated with his plush comrade in misfortune. In February, he won 90,000 yen. April was less fortunate in winnings. He won an amuchi set for food. There were dumplings, peaches, and shrimps, as well as a tomato and chocolate. But the peak was a live lobster. He danced with it and ate it. It was the first lobster he had ever eaten in his life, and it was cooked in a sake can. Speaking of dances, this became one of Nasubi's entertainments. When he received something useful or edible, he would do a victory dance. These dances were cut into a compilation and were particularly popular with viewers who found it so funny to watch some freak rejoicing over a piece of chocolate. Of the useful things, he got a vacuum cleaner and was able to clean his room, toothpaste with a toothbrush, and a TV that only showed white noise. As for the useless things, he won a Pokemon mat. The month turned out not particularly successful, as he didn't receive anything for a whole week. Just imagine, for a whole week they knocked on his room, only to take the tapes, and that's it. A whole week waiting for when he could eat something or get something useful for household. May turned out to be one of the hardest months in this show, but the month started with a medical examination. The doctor measured his blood pressure, felt his pulse, and left. Neither the diet nor the lack of fresh air and sun bothered the doctor. It seems to me that this examination was only needed to ensure that he would survive this damn month. Of the useless things, he won shoes, a globe, cosmetics, a mug, a water purification system, and a set of spoons. And for food, he got diet tea and jelly again. Can you notice that this is kind of a little? And what's there isn't particularly nutritious? 
And you'd be right, but all this shines and pales in comparison to the fact that Nasubi's rice supply ran out, and for some time the only food he had was filtered water. He starved for about five to six days until the gods of randomness finally heard his prayer and gave him food. Dog food. And yes, it's what you're thinking. Lacking alternatives? For nearly half a month he ate dog food. Let's talk about this. What percentage of this show is staged? And why the hell didn't he just leave this damn box? After all, it's one thing to eat plain rice prepared in a can or starve, but dog food? What the hell? Why didn't he just leave? In an interview, Nasubi said that he initially didn't sign anything. That is, he had no obligations to the producer. But the guys from the channel have been doing this kind of thing for years, so they had other leverage. Firstly, they promised him something cool, albeit intangible. Fame. After all, if you become famous, you will appear in other shows on our channel. And there, look, they might even create a show just for you. And Nasubi fell for it, because at that point, he was a 22-year-old aspiring comedian trying to find his place in the world. He was unsure of himself, he still needed to hone his comedy skills, and a show on a major Japanese channel could potentially boost his comedy career. He didn't have much money, because by his own admission, he didn't eat meat very often before becoming famous, and everything just fell into place. But why didn't he leave after all? It's 50% about upbringing, which I'll talk about later and 50% about persuasion. They really brainwashed the guy. Dude, you're Japanese. Remember this. If we start something, we go all the way. Our ancestors didn't give up and you shouldn't either. God was patient, so we should be too, and all that. But at some point, it seems to me, a contract was indeed signed because Nasubi was already keeping his own handwritten diary, which they took from him at night, photocopied and published. Such things usually require the author's permission. So as it's usually done, they give him a contract saying, look, We'll pay you such big bucks. Just sign it. Don't read the fine print. And in that text, it says that everything you do inside this show will belong to us. The Nasubi trademark we've already registered also belongs to us, and so on down the list. And if persuasion wasn't enough to keep him in the room, they showed him that very contract with his signature and listed the penalty clauses to him. That is, you can leave right now. No one is holding you. But for that, you will have to pay so much money that your great-grandchildren will still be working for us. That's why he didn't leave. Also because he was naked, and he didn't want to go out onto the street like that. But let's look at the staging part a bit later. And by the way, you can breathe a sigh of relief. After he ate dog food for about two weeks, he did win 10 kilograms of rice. And holding it in his hands, he just cried. July turned out to be quite successful. He immediately got a barbecue grill with a grid and meat, which he was able to cook more or less normally. He also got energy drinks and nori seaweed, which he wrapped around the rice and made a sort of onigiri. According to him, the combination of rice and seaweed was the most delicious thing he'd tasted yet. Of the useful things he got a kettle, of the useless but desirable things, he got a poster of Hirosu Ryoko, which Nasubi was incredibly happy about because he was a big fan of hers. But in the middle of the night, they woke him up. The producers put a mask with headphones on him and drove him around the city for five hours and brought him to a new place, where he was awaited by the same room with the same chosen goods, all with the same plank of one million yen. Nasubi was told that he had moved because this place was luckier. But in reality, the media had found out about the location of this terrible experiment and were trying to snatch their share of the fame. After all, by that point, the show was breaking all ratings. And now let's talk about the staging. I want to make a very strange statement, but let me speak. If we cast aside all human aspects and forget about all the horrors and torment that Nasubi went through and look at the show as a commercial product in a vacuum, it's worth noting that this show is truly brilliant. Yes, no ratings are worth human torment, but just let me share an observation to answer the question. Who the hell was interested in watching Nasubi's horrors, and why was the whole of Japan watching this show? I realized that this show really works when I, 25 years later, was watching a five-hour edition of this show on YouTube in 360p resolution with English subtitles and couldn't tear myself away. Just imagine that in 1998, the creators anticipated many YouTube trends. You might say, ooh, my life blog, how observant you are. But no, it's about, yes, it sounds strange, unboxing packages from AliExpress and cases. Just think about it. A guy lives, writes strange postcards, and then there's a knock at his door.
He receives a package. He starts to unpack it, and without showing us, reacts to the contents of the box. After that, he presents it on camera. How is this not opening cases? Only the stakes here are much higher. Because bloggers who engage in this always come out on top due to advertising and views. But for Nasubi, a package is a necessity of life, so add to the funny dances and observations of a degrading psyche, a gotcha element that the entire show will depend on. And with all that I've described above, do you really think that the producers would hand over the one goods? After all, he could win a lot of goods, or on the contrary, win nothing. It's random, but to come up with another torment is easy. And do you know why this show is brilliant from the perspective of a TV show? I'm sure that in the office of the company there were mile-long queues of advertisers. As I said, the country is in an economic recession. It's necessary to boost business. And now imagine, in the most viewed show in the country, 17 million Japanese are watching as poor Nasubi rolls his eyes in pleasure eating branded food, enjoying a named Amauchi set eating branded jelly, turning away and eating rice from a specific prefecture. It's impossible to come up with better advertising. And this is despite the fact that for filming you need two apartments, a minimum of people, one camera and one microphone. And that's it. Let's repeat, the producer of this show, a louse, the channel executives who approved all this, scoundrels, everything happening there, inhumane. And despite all this, I tip my hat to you. You have created a unique product based on human violence, but along with changing the room, they also changed the camera, replacing it with a digital one. So now Nasubi didn't have to change tapes several times a day. And do you know what else is special about digital technology? It can broadcast images directly to a computer and from a computer to the internet. One of the original reasons why Nasubi agreed to this was that he was convinced of a specific form of production. He was told that everything happening here is truly an experiment, and at the end of it, they would see what happens. If it turns out to be uninteresting, they would pay him and destroy the tapes. But if something does work out, they would edit it and cut out everything he didn't want to show. So, being in that damn room, he thought he was filming video reports for a future hour-long show. But in reality, all his dirty things and deeds were broadcast in prime time. And as a cherry on top, to involve viewers even more, all of this was accompanied by thoughts from his diary without his knowledge. And to finally portray him as a freak, they took parts of the text that contained errors and corrected them. Because laughing at illiterate people is funny, but not as funny as broadcasting a man going insane to the entire world. In 1998, the channel's producer launched a live broadcast of Nasubi on the internet. A few people monitored 24 sevenths to ensure everything was censored. And round the clock on the internet, one in six million eyes were watching Nasubi. Not all at once, of course, but this is the total number of viewers. Think about it. 1,600,000 viewers in 1998. And only one question. Did Nasubi know about this? I think you know the answer. He survived the summer more or less normally. He was given toothpaste, a brush, a vacuum cleaner, an inflatable circle, and for food, a watermelon, rice smoothie, and pickled eggplant. But at the end of August, he didn't receive anything for two weeks. To compensate for this in the best traditions of Japanese television, they decided to organize a bonus over episode. You have five seconds to guess what it was about? Yes, you guessed it. It was a beach episode. But here's the thing. Give a man a chance to be a little outdoors, to sunbathe, to feed him, after all. But the producer of this show saw a new way to mock Nasubi. They woke him up in the middle of the night, drove him somewhere for a long time, put him on a boat and didn't tell him anything. So at first he thought that an earthquake had started. And then they dropped him off on an island in those strange boots and left him a barbecue, a lighter, and an inflatable circle, so conveniently that all these things he won just shortly before the trip. I hope you understand why Nasubi never won gifts in this show. To understand how terrible his condition was, the first thing he did was to run to the sea to drink water. And not because he was stupid and didn't know that you can't drink seawater, no, he wanted to try salt. He hadn't eaten anything salty for so long that he just wanted to try salt. Next, he had a good time, 
walked a little around the island, found some seafood, ate it, and was thrilled by it. He sunbathed, swam, so he was really relaxing both physically and mentally. The walls didn't press on him. The usual dead silence was diluted by the sound of the sea. Nasumi was able to restore some of his mental and physical health. And do you know what the project managers did next? They made him hate himself for it. According to the rules, he could rest here as long as he wanted. But while he was resting, no one would be picking up packages at home. That is, if his prize is delivered to him, it will not be handed over to him, and they will not count towards the general score. Nasubi was upset and went back to living within four walls. That's how his rest ended. Then a large part of his winnings was paper and often offensive. For example, Spice Girls tickets, a brochure for students, a car sound magazine, free English lessons, another Miss Good poster, an encyclopedia on compact discs, hotel flyers, a pie with tapes, after which he moved to a new place again. This time the producer said that everything in this house was according to feng shui, when in fact they found their apartment again in a new place. Nasubi was lucky right away. He was given something really tasty chips, fruits, syrup, and crab. And also they finally gave him a way to spend leisure time. He was given a VHS player, and considering that he already had a TV and a couple of tapes, the poor guy's happiness was indescribable, but they couldn't help but mock him. Right, so what were these tapes? They were a video of the 51st Japanese Cycling Championship, and a video on how to remove unpleasant underarm odors. And Nasubi was happy. On the TV there was a moving picture, and there was sound. And this sound was associated with a moving picture. The last time he watched TV was nine months ago, and this is some kind of madness. But concerning leisure, November outdid October. Because a VHS player with a video of the 51st Japanese Cycling Championship is of course good, but it does not compare to the fact that he was given a PlayStation 1. I can't find words to describe Nasubi's delight. He has interactive leisure, and not just any kind. This was an awesome leisure activity for 1998. It's a PlayStation. There are so many amazing games on it. Silent Hill, Metal Gear, Resident Evil 2, Final Fantasy. This small box could completely change the status of his captivity to a vacationer. And you, I hope, Remember that he had already won a PS1 disc. Well, did you hear that pause? Of course, such luxury could not be granted to him. Do you know which game he won? Densha de Go? What is it? It's a train simulator. And do you know what needs to be done in it? You have to drive a virtual train on virtual rails. And Nasubi played this for four days in a row. For four days he was getting real pleasure that he could play a game. That is, for four days he looked at the screen, and there... He played this game so much that he forbade himself the PlayStation to return to writing postcards. But also, by the way, if you were curious what the very first video game streamer in human history looked like, he looked something like this. Only the streamer didn't know he was a streamer. Also, this month can be considered lucky because he was again given meat to eat. December is an important point in this story. Even despite the calendar with his favorite waifu photo of Antonio and Nokia, it is worth noting that in the 11th month of his confinement, he was given normal dishes for the first time. He got a frying pan. Just remember that for all these 11 months, he was cooking rice in a sake can, and in the absence of rice he ate dog food. But the most important goods were tires. On the one hand, in his position the item is useless, and on the other hand, they were worth a decent amount. Thanks to them, he finally collected 1 million yen. I forgot to mention earlier, he received goods but never knew their cost and how much more he needed to collect to end the experiment. But it finally happened. His torment, at last, came to an end. But you don't think they would just congratulate him, do you? They came to him at night and woke him up with party poppers. A person who was going mad from silence was woken up in the middle of the night with party poppers. They finally gave him his clothes. He put them on and then immediately took them off. After all, he was not used to wearing clothes, he felt uncomfortable in them, they prickled, his whole body itched in them, after which they properly fed him a meal and again covered his eyes. And you perhaps sense a trick, but there is none. When he opened his eyes, he saw South Korea, where he could eat anywhere and as much as he wanted. And after he filled his stomach, they took him to an amusement park where he had a good rest. In the evening, they took him to a market for shopping. He bought himself a pot of kimchi, they covered his eyes, he got into a taxi to be taken to the airport, and when he opened them, 
he found himself in the same little room with a coffee table, postcards, magazines, and a Korean-Japanese dictionary. The producers told him that there are also prizes in Korea, and it needs to be found out if one can live in this country on gifts. Can you imagine the level of this villainy? They understood that Nasubi was on the edge. They understood that he might just leave, despite the penalties, but he won't be able to leave if he's in another country. This is the main reason for moving locations, to make you feel even more uncomfortable than before. I simply have no words. What about the goal? Well, this time they decided not to set the 1 million yen mark. They settled for 46,000 for a ticket back to Japan. Nobody wanted to end the show. The money keeps rolling in. My respects. So for Nasubi, they decided to add a difficulty modification in the form of the Korean language. Want to read? Read with the dictionary. Want to write? The method is the same. Luckily, he had a pot of kimchi at first, and he could eat properly. The first thing he won in Korea was some kind of catalog, but Nasubi was overjoyed with it like nothing else, because it convinced him that he could participate in the Korean draw, and his chance to return home was not zero. Then he got lucky. A TV, bananas, kimchi, and some other small stuff. He quickly gathered the necessary amount, and they immediately sent him home? Of course not. The producers looked at his diligence, decided that economy class for this hard worker was somehow unserious. He had to fly business class, and such a ticket already cost 57,000 yen. So he continued to fill out the forms. Fortunately, he came across expensive tea, and the sum was collected again. But now they will send him home, of course, but not in business class. Have you seen what he's been through? This is at least first class, and that's already 81,000 yen. And again, everything started all over again. Fortunately, this time he got lucky with food, ribs, and live octopus. And a lot of things were also inedible. Bamboo sword, photo frame, a scarf with a fox. And what do you think? The sum was collected. But wait, with such money? Why fly to Japan when you can fly to Paris? As far as I can understand, they plan to raise the cost of the ticket each time, inventing new reasons not to fly home. But Nasubi put his finger to his nose, and realized that he had already collected the necessary amount a long time ago. After which he talked to the producer and told him that he can't live like this anymore, and that he wants to go home. So, to make it clear, it was physically difficult for him to write postcards, because his nails had grown so much. His hair had grown so much that it fell into his eyes and he had to pull a rubber band from some prostitute's panties to use it as a hair tie. Well, eventually Nasubi's requests got through to the pea brain of the show's creator, and he was indeed sent home. But, when they picked him up in the middle of the night, as it should be, scaring the poor guy to death, he accidentally dropped a heavy flashlight on the guy's crotch. Other than that, nothing unusual. They dressed him, closed his eyes, and put him on a plane. And do you really think that the grand finale of this story would be complete without the most brutal act of humiliation of human dignity? Far from it. They carried him somewhere for a long time, sat him down. He opened his eyes and again saw an empty room with a camera in the center. He reflexively undressed, after which the walls of his room fell and he saw 1,000 people looking at him. To say that Nasubi was shocked is to say nothing. Do you think scaring a person to death would be enough? Of course not. They immediately started spilling the mother truth on him, that all this time, he was being shown on TV. He was broadcast live 24-7. He's on the cover of a magazine. His diaries were being sold in bookstores without his knowledge and became bestsellers. His reactions to the taste of delicious ramen became part of the advertising campaign for this product. They literally locked him in a room, drove him mad, starved him, and when it was all over, spilled all the truth and handed him a clown's badge. And for you to understand the horror of his situation, let me tell you something else. I once drew your attention to Nasubi's upbringing. He was raised by a father who worked in the police, and when the young man shared his life goals, that he wanted to become a comedian. The father, of course, was not pleased. So it took a long time to change the parent's opinion, but when he finally did, the father put forward one single requirement. You can entertain people, make yourself look foolish, joke jokes, but promise me that you will never, never undress in public for fun. And now look at the face of a man who has spent a year and a half of his life naked, watched by literally the entire country, and is now being devoured by the gaze of 1,000 people in the room. This is the grim and frightening note on which the story of this show ends. But that doesn't mean it all ended for Nasubi. Of course, he was paid, but compared to how much was made off him, it was peanuts. 
But on the other hand, he did achieve fame. The fame of a gone naked freak, dancing with food and talking to toys. He was constantly invited to different programs, but in the image of a Cayman freak, which he was not. So he rejected all the offers. His attempts to become a comedian were not successful because for the first six months, it was simply difficult for him to talk to people. He tried to perform on stage, but it seems to me the fear of the audience still lived in him. It took him a whole year to get used to wearing clothes. For a whole year, it was uncomfortable for him to simply exist outside of his room. It is worth saying that Nasubi is a man of iron will. He not only buried the image of a sick psycho himself, but also managed to find a few normal roles in movies for himself. He opened his own theater school, and now he is doing charity work in his native city of Fukushima. In addition to raising funds to prevent the consequences of the accident, he runs a show where he talks about what happened then and dispels myths about radiation in his city. And recently he climbed Everest. Despite the terrible abuse he suffered, he is now feeling quite well and helping others. What about the producers and others responsible for this nightmare? No one dared to take responsibility, nor to admit that they were doing something wrong. We did something unique, and unique requires sacrifices. That was roughly the rhetoric. But after a decade, in a personal conversation with Nasubi, he did apologize to him, and our hero, as a man with a big heart, was able to forgive him. And you know, delving into this story, watching this show, I couldn't believe my eyes. A man was bullied for over a year and everyone liked it. Listen to how people watch this show and burst into laughter. <laughs> and only one thought scares me, looking at these huge numbers, broken lives, and the joy of the audience. I'm afraid that Black Mirror, Squid Game, and The Truman Show will soon be in our subscriptions. But as reality show 